Elemental had the Web Forward 2025 event yesterday live on YouTube, which kind of is a roadmap for what they're going to be releasing over the next 12 months. Part of that was the website planner that they've introduced, which is currently in beta, which you can use if you're an Elemental Pro user. Currently, it is free. Whether it'll stay that way, I don't know. But let's take a look at how it works. So the website planner is effectively an AI way of asking you questions, or you can upload a document that outlines what you want to do with your website, and you kind of pre-answer those questions. And it will then create a wireframe, it'll create a sort of sitemap for you, and it'll do a couple of other things. There are still some limitations in here, which I'll talk about as we go through, and the reasons why I think they're limited at this point in time. But let's take a quick look at it and see how it stacks up against the competition. So this is what you get when you access it. This is your getting started page. As you can see, we can use the AI chat or we can use the AI note taker. Let's start with the AI chat. This is going to ask us now a series of questions. Or like I say, we could upload a document that has answers to all those questions if it makes it a little simpler. So if you wanted to use this with a client, maybe as a starting point, you could then give them a questionnaire that has those set questions, which you could then input into this. Whether you use it for client work, I don't know. Anyway, so let's first of all take a look. The first step of planning your site is creating a brief. A few questions that were good to go. What's the site's name? We're going to go for Widgets Inc. So what type of business are we involved in? So we create high quality widgets for the photography market. Again, let's just answer that question. So what are the key services or offerings you provide to your target audience? Again, let's answer these questions as they come up. I'm not going to sort of take the time to go through all of these. We'll go through it quite quickly. But as you can see, it's kind of building out the brief summary over on the right-hand side. It tells us whether we've got a strong brief or a weak brief or a very good brief. You kind of get the idea. The better and the more focused you are with this, the better results you're probably going to get anyway. But let's carry on. So what are our primary goals to increase sales, showcase products, or generate leads? Well, let's do increase sales and showcase products. We'll hit send. Do we have any secondary goals? So we'll say we want to build brand awareness and engage with the community. Now, at any point, you can skip these and you can get help, which is interesting. So we've got some sounds like a solid plan. What core features or elements would you like your website to have? We'll have a product catalog, a contact form, and a newsletter sign up. Obviously, you can add additional things in here if you want to, but we'll stick with what they're sort of suggesting for now. Okay, so we've carrying on again, you see we've got our basic brief going on here. So we'll say we want to be innovative and cutting edge. So all these things I'm assuming will help us create a design brief, a design overview, and also a kind of wireframe that has that kind of look and feel and kind of tone of message. So could you please provide a site map for your website? List all the pages like you include. So we want home products about us contact. Yeah, that looks pretty good. We'll stick with those. And we'll click on send. Sitemap looks straightforward and efficient. Let's move on to some optional questions for further enhance your website plan. What's your target audience age range? Well, we're going to say these are for your kind of 35 to 54, the people that have got disposable income in this example. So we'll say, let's go with that. So now we can carry on and, and sort of answer more questions, give more information. So again, it would be one of those things that the more you give this, the better chance you're going to get some decent results. But we'll say, I'm ready, let's go. So this is now going to use this brief and create that kind of sitemap, create the wireframe and so on. So let's say, yes, use this brief. And that will take a little time to go and create everything. So this is now fleshing out the sitemap. Now, the sitemap is basically showing you the pages we said we want to include, but also it suggests different sections for each of those pages. So a homepage products about us and so on. So the more pages we add here, the more we can add into our kind of sitemap. So we'll let this carry on and finish off its homepage. And there we go. We now have our sitemap. And as you can see, all the pages that we asked it to create are included in there, including things like our header and footer. So if we zoom in a little bit, we can now see what these sections contain. So a header section of the Widgets Inc. website probably features the company name and navigation links. So you know you get the idea, your hero section, those kinds of things. So it's kind of using what you would expect a pretty standard kind of page layout would include, but you can re sort of regenerate this section or you can trash it. So if you think, for example, we don't want a statistics section, you could trash that from there. Your contact info, again, let's say we want to regenerate this section. It's now going to 
regenerate that using the AI functionality. As you can see, it comes back with more info. We can reorder these by simply dragging them around. So the interface itself is quite snappy. You know, it's quite simple and straightforward. You can get this to regenerate the entire page as opposed to just a specific portion of the page. And we've also got these options to rename this or find the page in the wireframe. So more complicated wireframes, it would be useful. You could just jump straight to that page in the design. Before we jump onto that, let's just scroll down a little bit and see what else we have. So here you can see we've got our product about us. So we've got the same header section, we have the same footer. And you can see it gives us information about what it suggests is going to be the right sort of sections based upon the answers we gave it and the information we gave it. So this is kind of like the boring side of it. What's more interesting, in my opinion, is the wireframe. So this is going to be a visual representation using these sections to build out the relevant pages that we've just kind of told it to create. So if we jump over here. This is now going to build those out for us in real time. So after a few moments, you can see that this has now created the various different sections using that sitemap to build these pages up for us. And as you can see, it's used the AI to kind of fill out the information. So if we take a look at our homepage, there's our navigation at the top. There's what it suggests is kind of like our hero section. Then we've got our kind of statistics, call to actions, testimonials, all those things that tie back into our sitemap all these different sections. So now switching back and forth between the two, you can see it does take a little bit of time to kind of reload this in. So this is now where the first limitation that I kind of feel, one thing that I would prefer to see done in a different way comes into play. Let's take our contact page, for example. There's our kind of hero section at the top. We have the same options to kind of regenerate the section or we can trash the section. But the problem with this, in my opinion, is we're reliant solely on AI. So if I want to regenerate this, I don't have any way of selecting any kind of predefined layouts that we have for hero sections, for example. You know, most, most websites will follow a very similar kind of setup, and that's kind of what we're doing here anyway. But we can only use AI. So if I choose to regenerate this, that's going to use AI to regenerate it. And give it a few moments, and it will regenerate for us. So now, when we take compare that to something like Reloom, which, to be honest, is very much what this is influenced by, it works in a different fashion. So this is a Reloom project that I've got. You can see there's my hero section, which is all editable. But what I can do is when I select this, you can see we open up this new panel on the left hand side. So what this allows me to do is choose from different layouts that have been predefined as a hero section. All I need to do is click on replace component. I can search from here if I want to, but you can see there's different options available. And I can just sort of choose to replace the component with something that I like the look of. So I might like the structure of various different parts, but I have the flexibility to choose different layouts that I want to choose without solely relying upon AI. So I'd love to see a kind of hybrid approach here. If you want to use AI to regenerate the design, click that regenerate button. If you want to pick from some pre-designed layouts for the hero section, the call to action and so on, you have that option as well. You may have a very specific idea in mind and the rest of the page you're open to having suggestions from AI, but we kind of have that sort of hit and miss. And if you want to get something back, you think that was a better design, you can't because you have to use AI every single time or add a new section in and then use AI to regenerate or generate that section. And you know, you kind of get a little bit unwieldy. So I would like to see a hybrid approach of both of those. But let's continue on. So you can see that we have all the different sections available here. We can switch between the various different responsive modes. So we can check this out now on tablet. We can check it out on a phone. Again, it would be nice to see more breakpoints here because we will have things like mobile phone landscape, tablets landscape, those kinds of things. So having just the three is a little bit limiting at this point in time. So it would be nice to have that expanded to have some more. Then you've got the style tab. Now the style tab currently doesn't do anything. You can see this is style your wireframe, stay tuned for updates. Now I think the reason behind this, and I could be wrong, is because in the first sort of six months of this year, they are looking to release the global classes function into Elementor and have that kind of rebuild of various different parts of Elementor in version four and the builder. I think they're probably waiting for that. So when you transition this over and you export the kit and you see the styles and so on, you'll have that global class functionality built into it. Hopefully that is the case because it does speed everything up. And hopefully you'll have control over what it names things because the last thing you want is to have just random names and you end up with tons and tons of classes that kind of make the, the whole design process and then the build process more long-winded. 
So hopefully that's how they'll go with it. But you can still export your style kits. So you can simply come up here, choose to export this kit. It will then go through the process of generating the files, the CSS, putting the AI content, basically taking what we've created in that wireframe and then creating that as elemental pages and components and all those kinds of things. So we'll let that carry on and do this job. And then we'll take a look at how this works then inside the builder itself. Now for ease, I've already done this with a different project that I test out using exactly the same process that I've just shown you. To be able to install this kit, what you need to do is come into the template section, go into your kit library, and from there you can import your kit. So you can choose the option here to import kit, use the zip file that has been supplied when you download it as part of the website planner, and then you have that built into your site. Now at this point, it is worth bearing in mind a couple of things that I think could be made a little bit smoother when it comes to taking that kit that you created inside the website planner and bringing that into your website. First of all, it does not install the Hello theme from Elementor, which means that if you don't do that, it's going to use the 2025 theme and Gutenberg, and then you're going to have kind of layout discrepancies because it's not showing up the way you expect it to. The second thing is that when it is installed, and if you install the Hello theme, there are certain things that you have to do to get everything working correctly. For example, by default, the Hello theme will display the page title. So in between your navigation at the top and the actual content, you'll have the title of the page. You have to manually go in and make that change inside the Hello theme. Again, if this is aimed at newer users that don't understand this, they could get frustrated by having to go through that process and maybe not even knowing you can do it, wondering why you have these kind of weird glitches going on. But as long as you're comfortable knowing that and you kind of get used to that process, it's okay. I would just like to see that made a little bit smoother. But now if we go and take a look, for example, in our pages, you'll see we have our about contact home services and testimonials. These are the pages I set up in the first example that I run through off camera. So if we go and take a look now inside the home, and we now have our design all set up. If we push the structure panel over the side, you can see everything is laid out using that kind of wireframe with just placeholder information, which we can now go through and start adding our images in, changing the text that's being used and so on. It's taken that design, it's put it in here. You can see though that our navigation at the top isn't working correctly, so we'd have to remedially change that and update a few things there. You know, there's, there's, there's still some remedial work that needs to be done to get this to where it needs to be, to be a fully kind of set up and work in wireframe. It is still a beta, so it is still, you know, room for improvement. And hopefully now with people using this, they'll give feedback, they'll take on board some of the things I might say in this video, what Imran's done in his video, the live stream we'll have, we talk about these things to, later today. But yeah, it's, it's a good starting point. It is very heavily influenced, influenced by Reloom. And if you're not the biggest fan of AI, this may be something that you don't want to use. But I'm gonna put the question over to you. What are your thoughts on this website planner from Elementor? What are your thoughts also on the bringing in the global classes in well, later on this year? Let me have your replies and comments in the comment section down below. As always, all the applicable links will be in the description. So if you want to try this out for yourself and you have a pro account, you can test it out and see what you think of it. But as always, I'd love your feedback. All links are in the description down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tats. Until next time, take care.